59 Buick Electra 225 flat top. It was the longest Buick they made that year. Other than maybe, I don't know, maybe a station wagon was longer, but I don't think so. I think the 225 stood for a 225 inch yeah, wheelbase. But even like a, like a, an electric convertible was shorter than this. Um, it's part of my collection of five that I bought. This was a common area for these cars to rot out. It's pretty solid. Yeah, it is. I don't have a lot of... Uh, I mean, we can pull it out and we'll open her up. All right. Can, like, look inside all the doors and stuff. Okay. And... Okay. We'll get the camera on the car when you start it up here. fuel pump running. Oh, it's power windows. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what I call a yank tank. What a beautiful car. I didn't realize they had power windows. Don't need the key on for them to work either. Oh, how cool. Foot start, you know, foot pedal start. Just turn the key on. Okay. So you just push the accelerator and it cranks yep. right off. That's how you start it. I'll get out. Definitely sounds good. You can hear the electric fuel pump clattering a little bit. Super nice. Does the oil pressure gauge in app or? Yeah. I, uh, Definitely charging. Yeah, it's got, so that's why I got the. Uh, oh, okay, the gas gauges under the dash. Gauge gauges. So you don't even have the sending unit or anything hooked up to it? No, no. Uh, I think the. Uh, I think the only gauge that works is probably the battery gauge. The fuel gauge does not work. So I don't know, it's probably in the sending unit in the tank. Uh huh. But the odometer works, so I've just been using the trip meter. Odometer method. How you doing, Cheryl? Yeah, this 
this car is clean. <laughs> so like, oh no! We got to eat out of uh, coolers. Eat out of the cupboard now. That's not good. Yeah. So, if you want to get a picture of them, those seats have just been redone original and I kind of patterned them after the, my Cadillac seats which I think looks looks right with the pleats going it matches the pleats on the door you know but it is non original but brand new seats brand new foam in the seats is this panel here original that's original, that's original. yep that's what that would that's what the original would have looked like. When I got it, it had some kind of cherry cloth on it. They had actually redid the seats and they actually kind of did it right. They just used like a really cheap terry cloth material. So it didn't, didn't have the original seats in it when I got it. Can you open up the hood too and the trunk lid? Yep. That engine sounds really good. Has it been rebuilt or anything? It was rebuilt many years ago. It was rebuilt in 1987. I got repeats for it. So granted it was 30 years ago. Uh-huh. But I'm sure 400 455 foot pounds of torque. Yeah, yeah I can pull this off. See how it's taking up underneath. Can I just the forge jet? Yep. That's for the starter, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, for a 60 year old car, this thing is pretty darn solid. Now I see the heater cores bypassed. Yeah, yep. I wish I mentioned that in the eBay ad too. Uh huh. It's bypassed, so I'm sure it needs a uh, heater core or heater, heater valve. Core, yep. Pretty typical of a yeah. 60 year old vehicle. kind of cheesy. I don't like it, but they actually put a little bit of effort into it and stitched around it. I don't know why. <laughs> why they would have even put carpet right. there. <laughs> right. I don't know. Yeah, it's got so, a solid trunk floor pan. Yep. Still has its paint on it. It's just, I don't know why. It needs to be taken out. So the spare tire would normally sit right in here. Yep. yep. We can peel some of this back here. Up in there, up in here. So it does have a lot. The original. Oh wow, that is solid. Yeah, you can see back in there. That's all. Oh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. That's where these cars rotted out the most. Rounding oh. where the tires would throw all the crap up in. 
The tires. Cardboard in here still. They glued the carpet to the cardboard. Yeah. I mean, this was probably done 30 years ago, and uh, they just kind of ruined it, you know. Yeah, what? I a mean, shame. I'd rather have a rough-looking original one than this crap. Yeah. Well, now this looks rough too, though. <laughs> probably makes the car ride a little quieter, but that'd be about the only benefit. You know, you deaden all that noise from the trunk, but you can see all the tires on these cars are completely under the body. And that's why these cars had undercarriage rot. But this thing is solid. So these are radial tires that you had the white wall done on. Yep. And you say there's about 500 miles on them? Yeah, probably. Okay. Not more than a thousand for sure. How old are the tires, do you know? Um, 17 maybe, 2017. So they're 16, only a couple of years old. Yeah. yeah, so they're fine. 16 or 17. All right, let's go for a little ride on it. There's the gas fill. Transmission, engine oil. I can see where the oil gauge tube yep. goes through. Yeah. That's where, because I, I put it in. Probably just a, a lot of times the oil sending units go bad. The the rubber diaphragm in them ruptures. Yeah. I had one in my Chevy rupture and it sprayed oil all over <laughs> under the hood. Switch on, which even you turn the switch on backwards on this thing. Oh yeah. Kind of and, then, and then you can turn it back to lock past the end, but then you need, you the need key a key to, to do it. I mean, yeah. just living in Memphis, it's not something you need to worry about. You need about to worry about either. having a key, huh? Yeah. And just push the pedal and the way you go. That's pretty slick. Park crawl is stripped out on this car on the trans. So you, oh, need, yeah, you, to, you need to use the, the park and brake. Yeah. Oop, I shouldn't be doing that, but like I say it has things that it needs. It needs the park crawl. And it needs fuel gauge and stuff, but I've just I use the park and brake and I Use the odometer, so. Has this still got a single reservoir master cylinder? It does. And and it's got the, uh, oh, what's that called? It's got the lower, it's mounted down low here. What's that? Uh, treadle back. Okay, the back power booster. Yeah. Yeah. So at least you have a parking brake that functions, so if you have hydraulic failure, right. you can oh, still yeah. stop yeah. the car. Oh, you got a day night mirror in this car. So I was going to go to the gas station and top the gas off, and Cheryl's got my wallet, so <laughs> we, won't, we won't do that. Good old dirt roads. Your road's pretty good. Yeah, it is. They, they put some new material on here uh, about eh, last year sometime. They got a good crown on it, so when it rains, it, it dissipates pretty quick. Yeah, and you're only what? Not even a quarter mile yeah, of the pavement. I got the clock working in my 59 Chevy. Yeah, I seen that on yeah. your video. Yeah. Took it apart and cleaned the contacts and the grounds. And it's been keeping perfect time since. It always kept time and then it just stopped working. And I thought, well, maybe the contacts corroded. Well, I don't know, you know how from far you storage. wanted to go, but. However far you drive. You're driving, it's your choice. Now these things. Have you ever been in a car with this transmission in it? I had a hydromatic in the Catalina. Oh, this is a hydromatic though. This is a uh, 
twin turbine. There's no, because the Wildcat's the same way. You won't feel it shift. It's like you're driving a snowmobile or something. That's the way my 60 Chevy yeah. was with the turbo glide. It had three stators in the torque converter, and it would, as the road speed increased, the engine RPM would come down. You remember that white 60 yeah, Chevy you had? Yeah. yeah. That was a great summer beater. I drove it every day in the summer. Yeah. Rain or shine. Had a 283 two barrel. I'd get 23, 24 miles a gallon. That is pretty slick the way you don't feel any shifting. got that speed sensing option to where if you go over what you set it sets uh, a buzzer off no i think it used to oh no, it doesn't no and it's out of calibration too oh well, yeah probably new new gear on the speedometer cable of the transmission it's probably got the wrong gear for the gear ratio on the axle yeah i don't think we're doing 85 right probably. now Actually, when you're doing when you're doing 85 on a speedometer, you're doing 55 in real life. Okay. I, uh, you ever look, you ever, you ever use that app yeah, on your phone? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it's about 30 miles an hour off. Yep. This thing cruises nice. Oh yeah. just floats down the road. This ride's better than what my Pontiac rode, and that ride rode better than the Chevy. You can definitely tell in that era when you went up in brands, yeah. there were superior cars as you climbed the ladder of GM brands back then. Now they're all the same car, just different emblems. Right. <laughs> take the Chevy and go for a ride, I'd come out here through Memphis, like come down Bell River Road and go yep. back up Boardman. It was funny driving out here today, usually I would always have the road to myself. It was one car right after another on the road. Yeah, Sunday. Yeah. Looks like it handles the road good. I don't see any slop in the steering or anything. Oh, she drives nice. That's where we always take the kids up for ice cream right there. Or to Queen. The guy that runs that place is 91 years old. Wow. It's amazing. Well, I hope I'm still alive when I'm 91. Yeah. Although sometimes, you know, you outlive all your friends and family and stuff, that's no fun either. So my grandpa used to complain about all the time he outlived everybody. No pole stopping. Slam on the brakes here. Yeah, I guess it'll be Yeah, but they're drum and they're, you're on a crowned road, so. I'd say that's pretty good. Most yeah. most of these old rides, you hit the brakes like that. They change lanes easily. Whip the wheel around. So this doesn't have self-adjusters. you got to get no. under and adjust it periodically. Yeah, it's got yeah. self-adjusters. Oh, it you does adjust them yourself. Self, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day when you went to drive-ins and stuff, yeah. you know, they offered brake adjustment. Did they? Yeah. Uh, that's what we want to do. You know, there's a there's still a drive-in up in uh, Sanilac, up but, by Sanilac County. Really? And we're going to go there this week. So 
probably take the wagon. Wagon and a load full of grandkids and check it out. So what displacement is that engine? This is a 401 nail head. Okay. Same engine and trans that's in the Wildcat. Wildcat, okay. Yep. okay. I think they made the wild or the 401. I think 63 was the last year for it. 59 to 63. Then I think it went up to a 425. I think. Yeah, my grandparents had a 66 Buick, and I think it had. You know what? It had a, I think it was no, it went to a 430. Yeah, that's I, I think. I think theirs was a. I think theirs was a 425. I don't remember. I remember it was a nail head I, engine. I had that 67 electric. That was the first was year of that engine. Okay, so yeah. maybe it went to 425. And then yeah, 430, 430 was 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 not the same engine. Those were going engines though. I was trying talking to this guy. He has a 69 Bonneville. And it's got a 428 in it. Remember that Catalina yeah, that I Scott do. Lyons had with the 428? That thing went like a scared cat anyway. I was trying to work a deal with them on the Bonneville. The guy with the Turnpike Cruiser just point blank didn't want to sell it. Yeah, it gets up and goes pretty good. I'll take it up to... Definitely responds when you put your foot on the gas. You can tell there's some power in it. I kind of just did that for the video. I usually don't. When I'm cruising, I usually rarely take my old cars over 55 or 60. I just don't feel the need to. Yeah, I, you know, I never even get into my secondaries ever. So it wipes all the way to your... Right. Yeah, because mine will leave an area there. As they were, they're pretty short. In fact, on my uh, my 59 Cadillac I drive all the time, I put 61 wipers on it because they're longer. Uh huh. They overshoot the windshield a little bit on the ends, but... Mine are longer on my Bel Air, Just being too. a taller person, I mean, look where the... Yeah, you know, it's like they right wipe here. to here, yeah. And, just covers your sight plane, you know. They did it so they would butt together, you know. That's right. why they didn't put longer well, ones mine on. Overlap. Mine do too. But they don't seem to smack together too much. No, though. one sits on top yeah. of the other arm when I turn them off. I mean, they weren't made to do that, but they do. like they're supposed to. Horn works. Yeah, there's no rattles or anything. It rides smooth and quiet. So... So yeah, I get a shot of the oil fresher in that. Yeah, it's at idle basically, but it's like 180, 175 degree therm thermostat, I would guess. So you don't have an overheating problem or anything. No. I think these engines were, it looks like it's running well, you're a little on the fill now, about 25 psi, but typically these engines would run about 35 psi cruising down the road. 
they pumped a larger amount of oil at a lower pressure. That's the same with the 348, my Bel Air, 35 PSI is uh, oil pressure in it. So, maybe we'll pull this right in the garage and get it out of the way. Alright. So what are you going to try and get for the car? What's your like asking, starting asking? Well, I want to get, I'd like to get low 20s for it. I think that's fair. Yeah. Sounds good. Pretty darn nice. I like the power windows way. They they yeah. sound really good. This one probably of all my flat tops. If you get a video of this, these things kind of fly up. Yeah, they do. There's that one on that side. Um, yeah, they do move. Okay. All right. That's it. So this is going to be on eBay, so if somebody wants to buy it, be the proud owner of a 59 Buick, I will put a link in the description when it's on eBay for the eBay auction. And I think Dave's going to have a link to the video in the eBay auction too. So there we go. Thank you for watching this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed my video. If you enjoy my channel, please subscribe and thank you for watching.